A lot of small communities in Catalan got their start as railroad towns, settlements that originated because of a railway station or junction at its site. And as you're about to see in tonight's Eye on Catalan, there is now another small town in South Dakota that's still being developed. And when I say small, this one is really small. All aboard, the train is leaving. But it's not going to go too far. Hi, I'm Merwin Foster, and this is my garden railway. Merwin Foster has spent the past decade building an electronic railroad system in his backyard. Like a lot of people, I had an uh, electric train when I was a little kid. The thing that I probably enjoy the most about this hobby is the fact that, that, that I can build structures during the winter months. And I found an architect that uh, has drawings of all these buildings, and so I, I bought all the drawings I could get. As you can see, his railroad and his structures are more like a tiny town. The buildings are named after his kids and his cats. I wanted to do something a little more personal, so the buildings are, have all been constructed by myself. He's also added a lot of moving parts to this tiny railroad town, like this gondola, these waterfalls, and people doing everyday activities. All that contributes to, to really making it look realistic. Plus, he added in these tiny trees that have been carefully cut and trimmed. They're all real trees. I have no fake trees there, and, and they, uh, they, they only grow about the, the height that they are right now. Some of them are, are seven years old. They survive this climate. But he admits he doesn't do it alone. Well, one of the reasons this place is so beautiful is because my wife has taken over the, the planting of the flowers and the, it, down to the size of the, of the plants. When Merwin first moved, th there was a tree there. This was a perennial garden. That tree was in the middle of that garden. And so we had some land negotiations, as we call them. And uh, finally, we agreed. And I moved, we moved the tree over there. And I said he could do anything he wanted to this, but he had to leave that garden alone. Now, he does have a cut through. OK, I, I'll, I can explain that. <laughs> it, OK, it was two years of intense, two intense negotiations intense negotiations to get the right of way to get the train to go through there. And, and True. so uh, I mean, you have to do things like, you know, name buildings after your wife, yeah. you know, things like that. Foster is a retired industrial arts teacher from Northwest Iowa. He says that gave him the motivation and the know-how to build the tracks and the trestles, which were not easy. And the flagstone on the ground is uneven, so every trestle that's on this, every, every uh, part of the trestle had to be custom made so that you have the right grade and it ends up on, the, and it's a smooth ride all the way down. As for a name for his town, he calls it Mini Sioux Falls. Foster now has four trains that ride the rails on 900 feet of track around and around on his garden railway and they're all controlled by remote. So you, you hear the chuffing of the, of the engine, for the steam engine, you hear the whistles, you hear the bells, and, and so uh, uh, the fun of having this is to use all of those things when you're, when you're showing it. Foster says once he got started, he's never looked back, and that's how he knew he was on the right track. Wow, that's a lot of work there. During the winter months, Foster brings the trains and the buildings inside. The rest of it pretty much stays outside. Can we talk about attention to detail? Oh, oh. my goodness. My grandkids would love that. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Except they'd want to play with it. They'd want to touch all of <laughs> yes. the things, for sure. Great work there.